madness to go on a progress so soon. With the country unsettled and Lovell and the Staffords at large, if only he would have let me go with him. Well, you went well enough to travel. Besides, it might have endangered the child. Oh, yes, the child. But I'm much better now and quite well enough to travel. If he would just let me go north and join him. Would he be safer if you were with him? In Yorkshire? I am Elizabeth of York. Yes, well, that's why he... That's why he didn't take me with him. He was thinking of your health and of the child. He won't accept anything from me. Not even his safety. Vince, you shall be drawn... There was an attempt on his life. It was planned. It did not succeed. You knew of it? Uh, not from the king. How did you hear of it? One of my gentlemen was at the trial of the Staffords. He said that Humphrey Stafford admitted it in court. Don't speak of it to the king. At least, not publicly. He believes that a king rules by the love of his people. If he admits there are those who wish him dead, others might question his right to rule. Oh, the people do love him. They cheer him wherever he goes, but he must know that he has enemies. He does know it. He does not admit it. To live always in two worlds, one consisting of the truth and the other of what you allow to be true, isn't that most dangerous for a man? <laughs> dangerous for a man, perhaps. But for a king, most necessary. For a queen, too, I suppose. Madam, we have kept you waiting, and we ask your pardon. You're ready for the journey? You're looking pale. Are you well enough to travel? I'm feeling quite well, my lord. What do you say, mother? Do the doctors think it wise? If you like, we could delay a day or two, but no longer. The child must be born at Winchester. Well, why Winchester, my lord? Well, the seat of King Arthur. My ancestor, Cadwallader, Prince of Wales, was descended from King Arthur. Oh, I see. Oxford, you'll be travelling with the Queen. My lord. The Countess of Richmond has arranged a special litter. Now, my lord, you will travel slowly, only two or three hours a day if necessary, and stop immediately if the Queen feels tired. I shan't be tired, my lord. But if you are, you must tell Lord Oxford at once. Yes, your majesty. And send a rider on ahead to make sure that the road is not too rough. Henry, everything will be all right. Yes, yes. I will take care of your child, my lord. How absurd. Absurd? Everyone on the earth is engaged in a struggle for power. Everyone? Even if it's only the power to remain alive. And now that little object there gives me more power than ten armies. He does? Another life standing behind my own. Another head to wear the crown if mine should cease to exist. This is the most powerful being in our kingdom. And you gave him to me. How can I ever repay you? There is one way. You shall be crowned as soon as you're strong enough. No, not that way. Your Majesty's first baby. 
And uh, when will you have an heir? <laughs> when I have a wife like you, what's your excuse? Oh, it's not from lack of trying, I assure you. But it must be lack of something else, Richard. I've given you the wife. Do you want me to give you the heir as well? <laughs> well, Your Majesty's kindness itself, but my wife is your cousin. If you weren't so religious... <laughs> I think that deserves something special, don't you, Arthur? Yes, Father, I do. What shall it be? Bread and water. What? Bread and water for one wrong note. <laughs> yes, bread and water. <laughs> Our son is a harsh little prince. So we have no more music. The minstrels will play. Uh, what about you, my lady? I'm hungry. Then we shall eat. <laughs> Henry, will you please keep quiet and sit up? That's much better. Father. Benedictus benedicat. In nomine Jesu Christe. Amen. 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 May the minstrels play, Father. Yes. When I'm Queen of Scotland, I shall have music all the time, won't I, Father? And Henry will dance for me. Shan't. Arthur will. Oh, Arthur will be too busy dancing for Catherine of Aragon. Spain and God willing, madam. Oh, I will be too busy ruling to dance for Spain or God. Well said, Arthur. Spain, England, and Scotland. Who will I marry, Mother? Where will England be? Where you placed it. In the centre, mingled with true, unquestionable royal blood. You set the independence of England as a price for royal blood. No, Mother, I simply wish to speed the respect of Europe and those who still say that the crown of England rests on bastardy, high-ranking though it may be. My Lord, eat! Our independence is not at stake. We shall swallow up Scotland and ally with Spain. So, Arthur will marry Catherine of Aragon. Yes. Spain and Outlive us all. Madam, what are you doing with that thing? Removing the jewels, sir, that I may return them. But I gave them to you. Sir, they made a good show, but now they must be returned to the strong box. And how often have you repaired your gown or those shoes? I believe those buckles are of tin, madam. Are they of tin? Yes. And if I give you money for silver buckles, you'll spend it on charity, no doubt, or in support of your sisters. <laughs> oh, Bess. You carry economy too far. Keep the jewels in memory of this great occasion. For I think that nothing has pleased my people more than this marriage. Then let him remain here now at Richmond. Uh, the Lord Prince must hold his own court, madam. But it is winter, sir, and the Prince... The Prince has a duty, madam, and a title to uphold. He is much tired, sir, from these entertainments. Look at him. Look into his eyes. I beg you, sir, let him stay. Keep to your good works, madam, and leave the government of this realm to us. Hmm. Please, God. We have now secured the inheritance and have nothing more to fear. Uh, 
Her Royal Highness would often play with her brothers and sisters in Spain. Arthur, you must not lose, you mustn't. Margaret. But nobody can be the Lord Prince. An angel, that go wrong. Take. Um, move your queen here. Yeah. Her Royal Highness says that she will play against your majesty later. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> My lord. Are you pleased with them, sire? With your children? They are well favoured, madam, and a very great comfort to me. Ah, what does he come for? Something to eat, no doubt. The Prebler comes to begging. The Prebler My comes Lord to Harry, you will show more respect for the ambassador. But he's always begging me. Taisez vous. in this corner and when it comes to seeding flake come here flake come on you don't want to stay over there come on a little of your scented stock for the king likes to walk here in the evening over here I think madam your sister has come the lady Courtney yes madam Thank you, my lady. My dear sister, whatever They have taken you... William. He is arrested. They came in the night, waking us with their hammering. The officer would say nothing, but they took him toward London. I think he is shut in the tower. Oh, Kate, my poor Kate. I, I don't know what to do. They put a guard on the door, and the property is forfeit. Will you speak to his grace? If you would speak... Where are the children? They came in the coach. They must be brought inside and made warm. Madam. Now calm yourself, Kate. We will inquire into your husband's safety. Meantime, you shall join our household and keep close attendance on us. It will be a most singular chapel, I believe. A rare jewel for Westminster. For His Grace has required a new manner of building to serve his purpose. Oh, it does more than serve, sir. My ladies, you may tell the musicians to tune their instruments, for we will hear them shortly. It was good of you to come from London to see us. I am always happy to attend your grace. It must be cold on the river today. I have known it warmer, madam, but then for less secluded. Sir Reginald, I must ask a service of you. If it be in my power. This affair of Suffolk. A great danger, madam. With all respect to your grace's house, the king has still good cause to fear the White Rose. If the Earl should raise an army abroad... Could he do that without money? With the Emperor's help? With the Emperor's money? Therefore, he is to be publicly denounced and put under attainder. And my kinsmen here, Lord William de la Poole and Sir William Courtney, of what are they accused? Of aiding in the Earl's escape and of subsequent treasonable relations with him. My sister says Courtney took no part in this. You have the king's ear. I have the honor to advise his grace. He is subject to no man, as your grace knows. But if Courtney is innocent... He will be released. Do you think him innocent? It's not for me to say, madam. Have they been 
put to the question? No. Will they be given trial? Yes, ma'am. A public trial? I think not. Sir Reginald, I am asking you to speak to the King on this matter. I cannot do so, and you know why I cannot. Madam, I appreciate the difficulty of your position, and I feel for your sister, but I can promise nothing. Will you at least try to persuade the King to let her see her husband? I will do what I can. I shall be grateful, sir. And now, let us be friends again. Ah, madam, we are always that. <laughs> if it were fair weather, I would show you my garden. But we will hear the music instead. Oh, nothing but blowing rain and mist this whole month. Our son writes that it is quite as mischievous in Wales. Pray be seated, madam. I have asked the Holy Father to wait until you came. If we receive good things from God, may we not endure evil things. I have been commanded by your gracious counsel to tell you. It grieves me ill to tell your majesties that your dearest son hath departed to God. The Lord Prince of Wales, madam, is dead of the sweating sickness within two days of his taking it. The physicians could not save him. And the princess? Her highness took the fever also. It is thought likely to recover. My God, she does. We thank you, Father. God comfort your majesties in your affliction. Blessed Virgin, sweetest lady of mercy, why? Why? How should he be taken? He stood here and I held him, so sure that he would rule. First Edmund and now my proud boy. Is our house accursed? No, sir. Then why are our sons taken from us if our house is not accursed of God? Did his stars lie? All the signs, all the prophecies blessed their union, their welfare, their long life. Yet there were whispers. Sir, the marriage was... was sealed in blood no. by Warwick's death. Since Warwick's execution, both our sons... It was the plague, sir. Was it so? You must not blame yourself. I would not have that. I sent him into Wales. It was his duty. It was his death, madam. And I was so sure. Sir, I beg you. We still have left us a fair prince and two fair princesses. And God is where he ever was. Still young. We can have other children. One son. One single son to hold this fierce kingdom. Remember, sir, my lady, your mother, had no more children but you only. And yet God has ever preserved you and brought you where you are now. You must not despair, sir. For as your grace's wisdom is known all over Christendom, you must now give proof of it! You give firmer proof than I do. Well, 
We will guard well the health of our one prince. From this time he shall have his own chamber, which can be entered only through ours. And if it be safe, sir, we should fetch the Lady Catherine to work her recovery. We will. We will do so. Look. The night is passing. How bare the branches are. They're like arms against the sky. Oh, my sweet Arthur, my own darling boy. Bessie. Oh, I cannot think that he is no more with us, that we shall never look on him again. What shall I say to comfort you, who gave me such comfort? Only your own words, your own counsel, that we should thank God for the Prince Harry and take our solace in him. This is Is your mind changed, love? For Margaret, no. She shall marry Scotland. For Henry and the infant, we must wait upon events. Madam, take heart. Your Majesty, the Princess Catherine. Oh, my lady, my sweet Catherine. This majestad is... Ticello. The Royal Highness thanks Your Majesty for the litter you sent to bring her here. She's still very weak and has no liking to eat. There is a room prepared for her. Tu eres nuestra. Hije y nosotros te qui... Please tell her that we love her as our daughter and that we shall care for her with our own hands. Si, si, entiendo. Que Dios os bendiga. When do you expect His Grace's return? Not until tomorrow. He's in council. And you have heard nothing? I must see William. I must. Thankful he is alive. Be patient, my dear. Sister, I have been like a mouse all these months, and still there is only silence. You have this letter? A few poor words. Can't you understand that I need to see him, to be with him? Yes. I understand that. Forgive me. But you know why the Earl fled? Only one man thinks him a traitor, because he is afraid of his own shadow. And would not you be, my dear, with so many apparitions raised against you? Ghosts of his own raising? No. Warwick, Sir William Stanley. And how many others? How many? How many other creatures working to undermine him since he came to the throne? You were only a child then. He was tall and handsome and quick to laugh. Now he wakes in the night seeing those he has been forced to execute. He wakes from his own prison. I know. I hear him. He is not a cruel man. Yet you fear to speak with him. He must do what he thinks right. He must take precaution. And you think it right? Bring out the cards, Kate. And let us say no more. Oh, yes, the cards. Or shall we play dumb crumble? Now you are being foolish. You give him six children and a crown and must be dumb besides. I did not give him his crown. By your courtesy, sister. Do you think he has ever forgotten that or forgiven you for it? I will not listen to that you. That he doesn't know his people's feeling for him. He never won their hearts. It's you that they love. 
only because I am powerless. Because you are of the blood royal, and he is Henry Tidder. Tidder, the Welsh upstart. Hate. That's why he hates our house, because he has no lawful right to the throne. How should he have when his father was a bastard and his father a serving man? Be quiet, Kate. You, you gave him the crown when you wed him. You made Henry Tidder king of England. King of England, madam. True, rightful, and undoubted inheritor by the laws of God and man, elect, chosen, and required by all three estates of this realm. The god of battles made my right plain at Bosworth, my lady. That is the best title to a throne, the strength to seize it and to wield the royal power. You may go, madam. Grace. I came back early to be with you. Forgive her, sir. I beg forgiveness for her. She is giddy for her husband. You may tell her the incident is closed, but I cannot free Courtney. Now, what do we have here? A pudding, sir. A pudding? One of your subjects brought it to you for a present. Brought it to me? Well, well, we shall enjoy this present. How much did you give them? A half angel. There you are. I gave two sovereigns last night to see the great woman of Flanders. Pudding, three and four. Marvellous huge woman she was, a rare spectacle. Better than the Scottish boy with a beard, or the king without a face. Henry. Yes, yes. There's another curiosity. They don't see my face anymore. Only hands that hold out coin to them. Oh, yes, no. yes, the faceless king. So be it. But will you give us another son, madam? For we must ensure a son to succeed us and not one of your sisters. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, we thank you for your entertainment. Oh, madam. <laughs> Hush, you know my weakness for comfort. Sister, will you desire the company to pray for me and attend their departure? See the ordinances are observed. You must rest now, my lady. Are you cold? I am still cold from the chapel. Oh, no, Mistress Lee. Do not draw it all together. I would not be close in here. Her Grace has no liking for her rooms. I have never stayed long in this place. I cannot think of the tower as my home. Then leave it, madam. You wanted your confinement to be at Richmond. There is still time to go there. Or to Westminster. Your Grace may change her mind. No, it is too late for that. Let me speak to the constable and have him make the barge no. ready. This child will come early by candles. Thank you. <gasps> come, madam. All is prepared. Thank you, my ladies. You've both worked very hard. <sighs> so, my Lord Constable spoke with you, did he? You will take me to William tonight. Oh, madam. If my only weakness were for comfort, I should be a saint like you.
It is near dawn. Where is Aylesworth? You've come too late, Doctor. They're already taking the mask.